Exactly as we're going to be going ahead and checking out our first match of today, China versus Argentina, to see where the group, of course, standings were. Like you mentioned, um, Stefan, we do have China and Argentina being the current, uh, let's say, um, countries that have actually been able to establish that week one win. Um, as uh, they're going to be butting heads right now, and essentially, whoever does end up coming out as the victor, which of course will be decided today, will basically be clinching that top 16 position as you do also see that poland and canada are in this group as well they're going to be trying to fight it out do the best that they can you can see the previous week's uh, results just on screen right now too as we are going to be going ahead and checking out the current standings uh, like Stefan had mentioned just earlier between the two countries uh, just one more note uh, on the, the standings of the group as well. It looked like in the Canada-Poland match, it hasn't actually been fully updated. That was a draw. So this is one of those mm. groups where six points will be enough for sure. So if China can clinch this win, that is going to be great. And we can see on screen a pretty diverse set of uh, restricteds. We've got five different restricteds on the side of Argentina, four on the side of China, but it looks like the more standard ones have been the ones coming out and getting wins. We see the Veltal, unfortunately, losing for Ren Cheng Fu. We yeah. see the Necrozma Dustmane losing on the other side for Julian Martinez. So Zashian also seems to be having a little bit of trouble in this matchup. It looks like uh, Zashian is not quite as dominant a force as, uh, as you know, you, one might expect, having mm. played the ladder and having seen that Zashian is on, you know, like 560% of all the teams. But yeah. uh, I do love to see this sort of a variation in the restricted format. And that kind of goes to uh, the strength of this kind of a preparatory format where you come in, yeah. you've got one match. We see a lot of people bringing restrictives that you might not see in like an eight round Swiss tournament because mm -hmm. those those mons like Zashian or Xerneas or Kyogre, those are the ones that will see you through a gauntlet of eight matches in a row. But those are also the ones that you can try to counter team by bringing something a little bit weird. So it'll be interesting to see what these two players opt to bring here. Aleo Humphreys uh, has, uh, he hasn't actually played in this week so far, or in this um, this match, this group so far, excuse me, but Huan Zhengji coming in as a representative from China, gonna be going with that Kyogre once again. Well, yeah, so the Kyogre Incineral Rillaboom Nihilido wins a cut, and is that a Mammoth Swine I see as the sixth slot there that Juan's going to be bringing? Very interesting pick, of course. It is uh, unaffected by Intimidates due to uh, the buff of its ability um, uh, in this current generation. So uh, very threatening ice and ground typing there. I do really like it as a choice here, accompanied with a uh, team that you wouldn't expect it to commonly be seen on that Kyogre yes of course it does have the Tailwind uh, partner access via that Whimsicott's Prankster there but it's missing its Tornadus uh, Amigo that it's so used to having by its side well the, the little fun fact uh, I doubt we'll see this but Whimsicott does also get Hurricane so you know maybe oh. just uh, switched it out but um, yeah, I like this team a lot. You know, Nihilego has been one of those Pokemon that uh, I, I don't want to say it's flying under the radar because it really isn't, but it's one of those non-restricted Pokemon that it's not on every team, but whenever you see a Nihilego, it can be very, very difficult to uh, deal with because it just tends to get very out of control. If it can drop a Meteor Beam and get a KO with that, all of a sudden you have a fast Pokemon in Tailwind on this team with a plus two special attack boost. That's not going to be easy to stop. Yeah, and uh, Zhengji, of course, uh, you can see their accomplishments at more of a local level, but uh, that's nothing to shrug about at all. They've shown that they're very much involved in it. They're 17-time Shanghai Monthly Tour champion. Oh, my Lord, that's a lot of championships there. <laughs> so fair play to Zhengji completely, as we are going to be moving on to their opponent right now, who is going to be representing... Uh, Argentina, Alejo Humphreys, rocking that Calyrex Shadow Rider, Tapu Lele, Rillaboom, Entei, Whimsicott of their own, and a Mien Shao. This is really interesting, right? With the Calyrex Shadow Riders, we have so many different variations. We have the ones with the with the Whimsicott, we have the ones with the Mien Shao, we have the ones with the Ndidi, and this looks like it's trying to just kind of combine all of those into one. Uh, the main thing that's missing is that redirection. There mm -hmm. is no redirection here, which does mean you have to be a little bit concerned about something like a throat chop from an Incineroar, or just 
any dark type attack onto that Calyrex, really. But the difference with uh, something like a Lele instead of something like an Indeedee female is that the mm -hmm. Lele also just has so much damage output that for most of those Pokemon, we see sometimes uh, like like an Assault Vest Rillaboom or an Assault Vest Landorus. The ones yeah. that they'll be hitting neutrally can easily be doubled into and eliminated. So that really lessens the amount of threats that you really have to be concerned about with that Calyrex. But mm -hmm. it is going to be a little difficult potentially for Alejo to be playing around uh, things like Fake Out, what, if, if the Rillaboom on the opposing side comes in to switch terrains or something, without having uh, redirection, things could get a little bit awkward. Yeah, definitely. As we do also know that Tapu Lele and I think Mianchao actually do have access to Ally Switch. So if Alejo wants to go and have those secret <laughs> strats and techs on their side of the field, uh, I feel like they're more than welcome to in this scenario. As of course, we will be going ahead and transitioning into the actual match. First stream match of today, ladies and gents, of the final day of the weekend. And we are going to be seeing it from Zenshi's point of view. Starting things off, uh, I already like the sash on the uh, on the Mamoswine. We do see occasionally people will try to run Life Orb to just get mm -hmm. really big damage out in Tailwind. Even with things like Ice Shard, that can be really, really dangerous. But I do like the, the Focus Sash because there's a lot of stuff in this meta, Zashi and Cough Cough, that will just <laughs> kill that outright. But other than that, Rocky Helmet Whimsicott is something that stands out to me as well. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that definitely is. As um, uh, like you mentioned, it is very prone to getting KO'd, especially through even opposing Rillaboom's um, uh, grassy glides. There's a lot of high priority threats there when it comes to the speed interactions of Pokemon in the current meta. Where of course you've got these heavy, uh, very fast sweepers, such as for example Calyrex, and then you've got of course um, Entei, which Entei is uh, more commonly right nowadays. Essentially, they do very much tend to opt to go for the choice stuff as item choice as it does naturally outspeed Calyrex Shadow Riders, it has access to Crunch, it, it can even um, mainly outspeed those Zacians and get that very threatening Flare Blitz off if it's able to go ahead, pick up a KO from an uh, unaware Zacian, uh, if you may of course uh, in that scenario, but we're going to go straight into the leads of course, be very intriguing to see what each of these trainers are going to be going for in game one. And it looks like it's going to be the Mian Shao Calyrex lead, one of the mainstay leads of Series 10, of course. One of the, uh, I mean, we've seen Mian Shao Calyrex since the series started. Yeah. Uh, going up against a Kyogre and a Rillaboom. So already a, a pretty interesting start here. Mm -hmm. uh, fake out from the, the Rillaboom is essentially non-existent. We have a ghost type on one side and it's something with inner focus on the other. Yeah. So the Mian Shao gives a lot of tempo and a lot of pressure to Alejo here. It'll be interesting to see mm. how he opts to play this out. Yeah, exactly that, because Mianchao does have a lot of uh, potential with its move uh, pool. It does have access to that wide guard. It's got fake out, faint. So it has a lot of options to go for if it wants to right now. So uh, Zenji may be a bit cautious on uh, getting faked out, depending on which Pokemon it would be. Uh, Rillabooms do tend to have that Assault Fist uh, on them, so they will be able to withstand a single Life Orb boosted Astral Barrage if it does come out from this Calyrex on Alejo's side. And I believe we also saw the um, the Rillaboom click into knockoff there. So this is a little bit concerning. We don't Ooh. have a fake out coming out. So wow. we need to see this Rillaboom removed immediately. Oh, and that is exactly what Alejo went for. No fake out needed. Uh, just going for that raw Astral Barrage and close combat combination. More than enough to pick up a KO onto the Rillaboom on Zenji's side. Whilst uh, Zenji's uh, Kyoga goes for a Water Spout. Sure, it was weakened by that Astral Barrage, but my lord, it still deals so much damage. Bringing down the Mian Chao to its Focus Sash, as well as the Calyrex within very uh, close danger zone when it comes to its HP there. If, of course, of course, uh, Zenji can bring a Pokemon in right now that can threaten it. Yeah, we do have Tailwind as an option here with the Whimsicott, so this could get very, very ugly very, very fast. Uh, there's not much counterplay that Alejo has on the field right now to this kind of a Tailwind Water Spout play. Mm -hmm. uh, it looks like he's probably going to have to uh, protect the Calyrex and just try to reposition, uh, reposition a little bit, maybe with a switch out, maybe by just letting the Mian Shao fall and getting the free switch into whatever he has in the back. 
Mm. Yeah, I mean, definitely, because, of course, um, in, in this scenario, you do have the Tailwind um, pressure right now. I think having the Wide Guard, if, of course, Aleko does have it on the Mian Chao, could spell trouble if this Kyogre does want to go for uh, get a, another cheeky Water Spout off, if it can. But we're actually going to see Aleko switch out the Calyrex for the oncoming Rillaboom to threaten this Kyogre. All right, we did see Scald clicked, I think. Um, it wasn't the same slot as the... Uh as the water spout, but the Tailwind's gonna be able to come on out. Is it gonna be a wide guard? No wide guard coming in. And that's so much damage to that Rillaboom. Wow, I'm pretty yeah. sure, oh, it's a crit. Okay, so that's, <laughs> oh, oh, the crit burn. Oh, you, you hate to see it. You hate to see it unless you are Zheng Zhi right now, as their Kyogre was even able to survive that close combat from the Mian Chao. It took it straight to the face and it handled it quite well, whilst being able to essentially capitalize as much as possible from that turn. But in this scenario, I'm not sure if Zheng Zhi would have preferred the Kyogre to perhaps go down there. Yeah, this is a bit of an awkward turn now, because Mian Chao might even be able to pick off the, uh, the... Kyogre with something like a faint, even though it's only 40 base power, Mian Chao does have a pretty good attack stat. So even mm. something like a fake out faint would kill a turn of Tailwind and potentially get rid of that Kyogre. We'll have to see what exactly Alejo goes for, but Zheng Ji had a decent amount of tempo there going into that last turn, but mm -hmm. uh, maybe in a bit of trouble now. The switch comes in, Whimsicott's gonna come on out. So we could be seeing mm. an opposing Tailwind come in here. But uh, let's see, the Rillaboom decides to just straight up go for it, and the Kyogre yeah. is going to be taken down. It's definitely going to be taken down out of game one, which will allow Zengji to open up and bring their final Pokemon in as their Whimsicott opted to go for a Moonblast critical That's hit again. Crit. Wow. My lord, a very well trained Pokemon from Zengji's side, as it was able to essentially guarantee that a two hit KO there, bringing that Whimsicott beneath half of its HP range. All right, so we do have the Nihi coming in now as the final Pokemon. It, it, it's going to be a little bit difficult for uh, Alejo to play around this by the looks of it. I mean, the Nihi could just straight up go for a Sludge Bomb into either of these slots. If we see the Mian Chao switch in, that's going to go down. If we see the Calyrex switch in, that might even go down too. It's a resisted yeah. hit, but we it's a stab move from a pretty high special attack stat Pokemon, and mm -hmm. that Calyrex is only sitting at about 20%, so... This could make things very, very awkward now. It is a four versus two, but overall, positionally, I don't really hate this for Shang-Chi. No, because it's all about the um, just essentially having all of that pressure on the field right now. Naya Lido is just able to go ahead and pick up KOs if it can on the Rillaboom. I'm not sure because Assault Vest uh, can be quite bulky on Rillabooms, but uh, it seems like it may be within range of a roll there. But um, we're just going to be seeing the Whimscott on Alejo's side just go for the very safe Tailwind right now. It wants to try to uh, counterbalance the Tailwind on Zeng oh. or Zeng Ji's side as the Grassy Glide there. You see, of course, why the burn was so so crucial as not only was it able to not deal as much damage onto that Nihiligo, it was susceptible to that Sludge Bomb KO right there. It would have recovered a lot more HP due to that grass terrain on the field as Zheng Ji's Whimsicott goes for the finishing oh. blow, but it's not able to get it onto Alejo's Whimsicott as it just barely survives and hangs in there. I don't even know if that's really the best thing for Alejo, because being able to bring in the Mian Chao Calyrex combo, giving him that fake out pressure on that mm. first turn of Calyrex being back out would have been very, very nice. But at the same time, you do provide an additional target that needs to be uh, accounted for. So we'll, we'll see what the Calyrex does, really. This is all about the Calyrex now. What does this find? Has Nihiligo taken enough damage that the Astral Barrage will be able to pick it off? Maybe a side comes in because one of the concerns here is that Tailwind now, of course. So the Tailwind for Zheng Ji is about to expire, but as long as the Tailwind is up for Alejo, it doesn't really matter. The, the Calyrex is gonna outspeed both of these Pokemon all day long. Yep. So a, a difficult situation, I guess maybe a Protect Moonblast into the Calyrex could be the play because then you're, you're essentially putting yourself in a position where you're probably not gonna win unless your opponent makes a mistake. So you're essentially maximizing the chances of you winning if they go for that kind of a play. If the Calyrex decides, oh, you know what? I need to side shock here to pick up the Nihiligo, then maybe he attacks into the into the Calyrex and the, or into the Nihiligo with the Calyrex, and then you can just protect Moonblast and take that restricted out. But uh, well, the Helping Hand coming in, so that's looking a lot more like an actual barrage wow. to me. 
Yeah, that helping hand can really tip the scales for Alejo even further, but not just yet as Nihiligo opts to go for that protect. But in this scenario, the Whimsicott is more than open to receiving this damage. It is at full health, so if it does have a Focus Sash, which it does not, it gets KO'd there. So very, very useful utility of that Helping Hand, which essentially guarantees this game one for Alejo there. Very well played, as um, you needed that additional damage output in case, for whatever reason, the Nihiligo could survive that, as of course, um, uh, you could have opted for the Expanding Force single target, if you're Alejo, I would have suspect that move uh, being on the Calyrex due to the Tapu Lele, of course, accompanied by its Sight Terrain. But that just guaranteed it. You needed that additional damage output. You got it. You got the boost right now from the Grimnay activating. And this is just very well played from Alejo. Yeah, I do like the Conceive. There's really no win condition here for the Nihiligo anymore. So you don't want to potentially allow your opponent to maybe protect the Calyrex one turn to get more information or something like that. Just tapping out, trying to retain as much information as possible. But uh, there at the end, we saw the one of the risks you take when you throw a Rocky Helmet on that Whimsicott instead of that Focus Sash, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, it kind of makes sense in a way because you're trying to find that utility move. Um, having fake outs uh, essentially is a main good strategy up against Whimsicott's, but um, in that scenario, you already have the Focus Sash on the Mammoth Swine uh, if you're Zeng Zhi, and you're thinking, what can I try to better utilize and trying to, you know, get the best out of this Whimsicott? Sure, why not put a Rocky Helmet? You know, it kind of like uh, threatens off any potential fake out Focus Sash users onto it, so you're able to break the Sash there, just deal a tiny bit more damage. And it's just really good. And um, it just, it's a good selection, of course. But in this scenario, didn't work out for Zenshi mm -hmm. at all. Alejo was able to go ahead and storm the front uh, with their Pokemon, forcing Zenji's hand into this game too. They need to try to bring it back. It's a really back and forth game one as well. I mean, we saw the, the leads looked pretty good initially for Alejo. And then after the first couple of turns, Zheng Ji was able to really sort of switch it back into his favor. But mm -hmm. the brilliant positioning at the back there, identifying... Uh, from Alejo, I have Whimsicott in the back. I can switch out this Calyrex, make sure that I get up uh, my own Tailwind, and then there's not going to be much else that my opponent can do against me. So really, really well played set that, or game there by Alejo, and we'll have to see what the adjustment is coming in from both of our players, really. Yeah, exactly that. So, of course, once again, seeing it from Zengji's point of view, uh, they've got a couple of options they could go for. I do completely understand going with the strategy that they did, but the problem is that Alejo does have the Whimsicott of their own, essentially, and they've got that very strong fake-out user being the Mian Shao, where it's just so many mind games that you have to consider all within the first turn of each game, if it, of course, it is led with it. So, um, in this scenario, I'm not sure. I feel I feel like maybe, uh, I was thinking maybe the Incineral can have sort of access if you're able to get rid of that um, Mian Chao uh, effectively. So seeing a Rillaboom and some sort of priority going up against it, even that Kyoga, makes a lot of sense. I'm not thinking that Zhang from what it looks like isn't trying to up for Incineral, but it could be quite nice in able to getting that res that resisted um, uh, damage input from the Calyrex and being able to even threaten opposing Rillabooms with those Intimidates and even Fake Out. Yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see what the adjustment is here with the exact same lead. Uh, if, if I was Alejo, uh, you do always have the Mianchou Calyrex as a secondary, as a second game lead as well, right? It just worked. Mm -hmm. You can do it again. Yep. see what, how the opponent decides to adjust. You know, some players like to use a game two when they're up 1-0 just to try to get a feel for how their opponent is playing. Maybe not switch things up entirely, but maybe sort of set yourself up to be in the best possible position for a game three. But this looks like a very different lead. We're going straight into the Rillaboom with the Whimsicott, and that's very, very threatening right now into this Kyogre. One of the most important things that we have to consider here is going to be the mm -hmm. speed tiers of these two Rillabooms. Yeah, definitely. As we did actually see um, Zengji's Rillaboom activate the uh, Grassy Terrain first through its Grassy Surge ability. So, like you mentioned, Stefan, I think it is uh, quite uh, quite dire for this Kyogre right now. It does not want to be here. It's not feeling comfortable. Um, maybe if you can go ahead and get a fake out onto the opponent's uh, Rillaboom and double in with an Ice Beam, that may afford a bit more um, uh, damage and essentially wear down essentially the Rillaboom that you may need because you need to try to prioritize that right now if you can yeah and of course being able to go for that fake out you know seeing that grassy terrain activate on Zheng Ji's side as you mentioned that essentially gives him the information that okay I can fake out the opposing Rillaboom 
and it looked like there was a water spout clicked by the Kyogre. So, you know, with that mystical water held item and the rain that does pretty good damage even to resisting grass types. Yeah. Uh, and there's the fake out. So, you know, there's always the possibility it could have been a speed tie or something like that. But, oh, ooh, grass not coming in. A oh. very interesting bit of tech there on that Whimsicott. And all of a sudden, this water spout is not going to do very much. Oh, no, not what you want to see at all if you're Zeng Ji right now. Very unfortunate turn of events. Very nice reveal from Alejo there. I do really like Grass Knot as an offensive uh, move on the Whimsicott of choice, as it has a lot of options. Or sh should I say, it's just very good against certain restrictors like Groudon or Kyogre. You're able to deal that additional damage, as we've seen Kyogre there, absolutely reducing its damage output from that water spell. Yeah, and that's a really genius lead, honestly. If you expect your opponent to go right back into the same Kyogre lead, you can just click Grassy Glide and Grass Knot into that uh, into that uh, Kyogre slot. One of them is going to hit before it attacks you. They're both going to do incredibly high amounts of damage. So Alejo basically saying, all right, pick your poison. And uh, another Grass Knot coming in here into that Whimsicott. Not really going to care too, too much, not even breaking a Sash. And uh, Rocky Helmet also giving a little bit of damage. Now, one thing, though, Costa, that I think is a little interesting, I don't know if we'll see it come into effect just because Calyrex is so good, but we've already seen two grass types here. The Mamo Swine's in the back. It might be able to have a little bit of fun. <laughs> Only if it is allowed access and room to do so, of course, as uh, having that priority on the Rillaboom isn't exactly the best, and the Whimsicott has just been running away with this grass knot uh, boosted by the grassy terrain, of course, as we did see uh, Zengi's um, Rillaboom opt to go for the knockoff there onto the Mian Chao, uh, being able to knock off a Focus Sash, which of course doesn't come into effect, as it was still dealt with a lot of damage there. Yeah, Mianxiao, of course, resists the knockoff hit, but it's such a weak Pokemon on the defensive side that any damage you get is effectively as good as a one-hit KO because it's gonna go down to one attack, procking its Sash, and then one attack taking it out. So, yeah. uh, really not a not the worst switch in there on Zheng Yi's perspective. You can just go for a Grassy Glide into that Mianxiao. Uh, of course, Fake Out is still a concern, but if you go for something like Tail and Grassy Glide, then you're, you're essentially guaranteed one of the two things is going to happen, so that, that might be what he's looking for here. Yeah, and I do really like Alejo's uh, rotation of Fake Out users, essentially. Just being able to threaten down Zeng Ji's Pokemon every turn, well, well, nearly every turn, should I say, with that Fake Out flinching effect is so, so crucial because you can just go ahead and get your strategy going, just like Alejo just did right now with that Whimsicott going for the Tailwind. Didn't even opt to go for the Fake Out, so just lost the Mian Shao there, maybe trying to go for a prediction over on Zeng, Zeng Ji's side, whilst they said no, they're just going to go for the very standard draft glide picks up the KO from that range and the Whimsicott is able to essentially bring that HP even further down on Alejo's Whimsicott. The interesting position with the uh, the Whimsicott's HP here is that it's low enough that Grassy Glide might actually pick it up despite the resistance hmm. which would be kind of nice. You have Calyrex coming in now as well. Um, you have to be a little bit Careful, because I, I'm not entirely sure if an Astral Barrage will pick up the uh, the Rillaboom from here based on that uh, Assault Vest. But of course, we did see Helping Hand revealed from the Whimsicott in the last game. So this sure. might be the kind of position where you just say, all right, it's time for the Helping Hand Astral. You can choose what's going to go down. You can switch something <laughs> in, maybe sack that low HP Kyogre if you want, but something yeah. is going down. No, it's a very valid point. I think that Helping Hand just throws the Calyx out of the windows, it's, uh, especially the fact that you were able to get that damage uh, dealt onto the Rillaboom, uh, which was super, super nice. So now, I think it may even be enough with the Helping Hand, and it looks like Alejo might be thinking the exact same. Yeah, a bit of a greedy play there from the Rillaboom, going for the knockoff, not going for the guaranteed damage with the Grassy Glide. You know, I think Grassy Glide might have even been a one KO with a crit, so that would have been a potential way out of this. But no! The Rillaboom survives! Wow, three HP survival there from the Rillaboom. MVP, at least for now, as we see the Life Orb recoil um, uh, taking a bit of HP, followed by that knockoff from the Rillaboom, being able to guarantee, of course, that KO on the four times weak Calyrex Shadow Rider. And all of a sudden, it looks like the momentum may be regained from Zayn Shi's side, but you do have to take into consideration the current resource.
resources available to both of these trainers. The Kyoga is still at a scaringly low HP range, so Zenji, and of course the Rillaboom, I was going to say, on the Leho side, is still available, so Zenji has to take those into consideration by bringing well, them back. Ice Shard, Costa. I mean, it, I, I don't, we don't know if he's running Ice Shard. No. But, uh, clicking, I think there's only one turn of terrain left as well. Mm. So going for a protect, he has the ability to outspeed the Rillaboom with this um, with this uh, Mamo Swine. Once Tailwind is also gone, I believe there's one, maybe two turns of Tailwind left. So maybe even an Ice Shard into the Whimsicott and then a protect mm. next turn, something like that. But this yeah. is what we were talking about earlier. The Mamo Swine might have a lot of fun if it's given the opportunity to. Now there's only Grass types left. This seems like Mamo Swine's playground. Oh, it does, as we actually see a hard switch of the Rillaboom on Zen Chi's side for that Kyoga, maybe anticipating the fake out there. But no, at least we see the Protect actually coming up from the Mammoth Sprite, not what you'd expect, as the Rillaboom on Alejo's side did opt to try to target down that slot, whether that be with a Grassy Glide or a fake out. And guess what? Just got knocked out. It's this Kyoga from the Grass Knot there. Alejo's Whimsicott not stopping, uh, well, essentially not stopping the momentum. Going for Alejo, taking advantage of the final turn of Grass Terrain there and just making sure that they get as much damage as they can on Zheng Ji's side of the field. I still like that play a lot by Zheng Ji because he's going to be able to bring back in this fake out pressure. Uh, if that's an Assault Vest Rillaboom, I believe it is. We saw a critical hit do very little damage to it in the last game. Mm. Uh, so I, I believe that is an Assault Vest. He should be able to piece that together from the information he's gained. Fake out, Ice move into the Rillaboom, and then you have the opportunity to run an Ice Shard right on into that Whimsicott if, yep. you, uh, if you're able to. So the... It looks like it's a pretty good position here for Zhang Ji. Now, we do have to consider that uh, the primary damaging ice move tends to be Icicle Crash, which is not 100% accurate. Nope. But uh, he's actually faking out the Whimsicott instead. Uh, I guess this also works because you have that Sash on the Mamo Swine. You know that the Whimsicott's not going to be able to double target you uh, with a spread move or anything like that. So, overall, this works too, as long as he's going to be able to hit with the Icicle Crash. And it's actually an Icicle Spear, which means that if he two hits, it's it's not gonna be enough. Oh no, so it's all oh, coming up. No! Oh, the commentator's curse, Mr. Stefan went ahead and unleashed it, unfortunately, onto this Mammoth Swine. Um, uh, very, very crucial there, as I still feel like Ice Shard may just be within the uh, correct range to pick up the KO if, of course, it was opted to target down that Rillaboom. But um, very, very uh, interesting turn of events, to say the least. Yeah, this is one of those moments where you, you think to yourself, why am I not running Icicle Crash? But of course, the other side of that coin is when you miss an Icicle Crash, you think to yourself, why am I not running Icicle Spear? So it's really yep. yeah, the lesser of two evils kind of situation. Tailwind is gone now, though. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if Ice Shard is able to outspeed the Rillaboom and the Whimsicott, because of course, uh, the, there is still Tailwind, I believe, on Zheng Ji's side of the map. So, mm -hmm. or Zheng Yi's side of the map. So. Ice Shard may still be enough to take this down if the Mammo Swine is running it. And of course, the priority Grassy Glide coming in will also be faster. And I still think that might be able to pick up the Whimsicott. So, Jengi is not out of this just yet. No, there's the Ice Shard. There, there's the Ice Shard and it picks up the KO. There it goes. Rillaboom is up for the count of this game too as Alejo uh, just has to receive damage with the Grassy Glide ensuring the KO onto that Whimsicott from that low HP range. So like you mentioned, Stefan, Mama Swine coming into the fray and doing so, so well, pushing this set into a final game three. What a fantastic game number two. And really, we saw... There, there was no no lack of very solid, cool plays there from the Grass Knot turn one to yep. the Grass Knot on the Kyogre switch back to the Icicle, uh, to the Icicle Spear, to the Ice uh, to the ice Shard. All of these things, things that you don't really get to see in BBC no. too often if you're just playing in standard Swiss tournaments. And this is one of the reasons why I personally and so many people love this kind of a format, whether it be in the World Cup or in any of the other team leagues, just because you see so much cool stuff come into play and you know yeah. one of the things that i noticed uh while i was sort of looking at these matches is that zheng yi has run kyogre at least once in this tournament already so Ooh. that that could well have just been preparation on alejo's side going okay i want tailwind anyway with this calyrex team what mm -hmm. if i went grass not whimsicott just in case my opponent goes for the the same kind of a, a kyogre build as i believe 
uh, Kyogre was the the restricted that Zheng Yi won in the game he won. He's won one match so far. So uh, that would be a very, very good bit of preparation. But in that game, not quite enough to secure the 2-0 for Alejo. We'll see who comes out on top in an exciting game number three. Yeah, exactly that. And I think, like you mentioned, the grass knot, just uh, it plays so well synergistically wise with that grassy terrain, whether that be Alejo's own Rillaboom being brought or the opponent. So having that additional base power is so, so crucial with a grass knot move, or should I say just an offensive move, based off of the weight of the Pokemon. So of course, Groudons uh, are even, I believe, susceptible to um, uh, grass knot from a 252 special attack whimsical in grass terrain. I say that through experience because I've done it myself. So it is a valuable, valuable um, asset to this Whimsicott as um, Zengji is just going to have to go ahead and uh, utilize as best as possible um, their scenario, just like they did with the Mammoth Swine. I think, like you mentioned, Stefan, having that priority eye shot is so, so crucial. Whimsicott doesn't have priority other than status moves uh, and maybe if in the past, nature power, should I say. Um, but of course, right now they don't. They got the Rillaboom. If you're able to guarantee and do the exact same thing you did in game two where you um, took uh, essentially damaged that Rillaboom so much where you put it within Ice Shard, you can honestly run away with this game. The focus has shown so much value on Mama Swine. It'll be interesting to see how Alejo decides to adapt here. Does he go for the double grass? Uh, probably not as a lead, but does he go for the double grass again just on his four that he picks? Or does he switch out maybe the Rillaboom or the Whimsicott and decide, mm. you know what, I don't want to be run over by that Mamoswine. I want to be a little yep. bit more on the cautious side. Yep. Let's see what the leads are. And uh, Alejo is going to be starting things off with Whimsicott and Calyrex. So, you know, we've seen pretty much at, like three very, very different leads coming out from Alejo in this set. And I think that goes mm. to show how much variety this Calyrex team has. You know, it's very easy yep. as a team builder to be like, ah, oh, I'll put something on my team that one hit KOs Calyrex and it'll be fine. But there's just <laughs> so many different ways you can support it. And we've seen so many of those different ways just put on a one team here by Alejo. Yeah, definitely. You just got so much de dexterity, like you mentioned, um, Stefan. Of course, having the Entei and uh, Lele, of course, are very interesting. You, I'm assuming the Entei would be a scarf there, so it adds a lot of situations Ooh. to it. But what, we see the sunny day coming out from the Whimsicott to add more injury, um, oh, salt to injury, should I say, on Zeng G's side, which goes for a tailwind, but the water spout from this character, no, the Scald actually will not be doing as much damage there. Oh, should I say it critical does, <laughs> due to the critical wow. hit. But no burn, as the Calyrex off the go for the Astral Barrage in retaliation. It does so much damage, brings the Whimsicott nearly down uh, to getting KO'd, and so much damage dealt onto that Kyogre. Yeah, this is a bit of an interesting position, though, because we can see that the Kyogre will not go down from another Astral Barrage, and he kind of needs to use Tailwind, Alejo does, in order mm. to make sure that he moves first. So he yeah. can't really go for the Helping Hand here very easily. So we'll have to see just how Alejo decides to play this, but that Sunny Day, Grass Knot, Sunny Day, Whimsicott, this definitely feels like he came into this week expecting a Kyogre team. <laughs> Yeah, and that is something that I love seeing on uh, just essentially um, the programmed and planned from trainers, especially in this kind of like closed format, if you may. But having Whimsicott uh, go for Sunny Day, have that accessibility is so, so good. I love it. It's a very good adaptation to opposing weathers, of course, um, as the Calyrex right now just wants to go for a very safe protect here. Because we don't even see... Oh, oh my lord. Okay. Encore coming out from Zengji there, but the reveal of the mental herb on Alejo, which does mean, yes, I am gonna go for my tailwind <laughs> and I'm going to counteract your speed control. This is such a good set, Costa. I'm glad we got to see this, but the ice beam Sorry. coming on in, not quite enough to one it KO, which is so sad now that we know that it's not a focus sash from Zheng Yi's perspective. Wow. Now, the tailwind's up on both sides. Uh, what's the game plan going to be? I feel like. Alejo has put himself into the perfect position to just click the Helping Hand Astral Barrage button, and we're going to have to see what Zheng Yi decides to do in response. 
yeah, uh, essentially so. So at this situation, we're going to be seeing Alejo switch out the Whimsicott now for the Tapu Lele. So uh, bringing that Psychic Terrain on the field right now, but more importantly, empowering that Calyrex Shadow Rider. If it does have Expanding Force, instead of a single target, it will be hitting double right now, threatening KOs left, right, and center, unless we see a change of terrain right now, which we do <laughs> from Zengi, bringing that Rillaboom in, now forcing the grass terrain on the field. Yeah, that's going to be really, really nice there for Zheng Yi, especially if Expanding Force comes out. Uh, it's going to be a little Ooh. bit lucky. But again, Encore coming in, forcing that Calyrex into spamming Protect. Encore is coming in clutch. I love that both of these players just hid some very crucial tech to game three. That's something that is talked about a lot in playing of, in the playing of a best of three set. Yeah. It's always how are you going to make sure that you are that you don't go into game three at a disadvantage? Well, information and gathering information and revealing information or not revealing information are all such important facets of the best of three. And both of these players did that exceptionally well in this set. Now we're gonna be seeing a reset on the weather, Kyogre coming back in. The Lele has to be a little bit careful here. Now it can still dish out pretty big damage. Sometimes we see a scarf, sometimes we see even specs on the Lele, but it's got to survive a hit from this Rillaboom first. Yeah, exactly. As we're going to be seeing Mian Chao switch in for the Calyrex on Alejo's side, whilst on Zheng Ji's side, we are going to be seeing the Whimstrot switch in, uh, switch out for the Kyogre, which now brings the rain and is on the field. So uh, now it just all depends on what this Lele does, as there's no Grassy Glide. Dazzling Gleam comes out, not quite enough to pick up a KO on the Kyogre there, but we see the signature move of Rillaboom, that drum beating, able to deal so much damage whilst dropping the speed of that Tapu Lele down to minus one. Yeah, we didn't see what it, that didn't look like Specs damage to me, so I would assume uh, that could be a Scarf. Of course, the Entei mm. might be running the Scarf, but you know, maybe the Entei has an Assault Vest. So the minus one speed is actually a pretty big deal here, especially if we consider that they, uh, that it might be a Scarfed Lele, but I, I don't think that's really going to come into play uh, if the Lele takes one more hit. Now, the, the uh, Kyogre is in a bit of an awkward spot, because if that Lele is Scarfed and the Mian Chao goes for a fake out, the Lele is just going to be able to take out the Kyogre here for free. So uh, we'll have to see exactly what Zheng Yi goes for and even what, what Alejo goes for as well, because we don't know the items on Alejo's Pokemon except for the ones that were revealed in this game. So this yep. is a particularly interesting turn in the context of where this game is going to go. Well, yeah, and Zenji does have access to the grass terrain. So, of course, takes complete advantage of that. Goes for the grassy glide there. It's able to get off uh, that KO onto the Tapu Lele before there's any sort of moves, such as this close combat going into the Rillaboom, but not quite enough to pick up the KO at all, just missing out as its uh, special defense and defense will be dropped. But ahead of this, Kyoga goes ahead, just naturally will be bringing it down to its focus sash. No burn there, which may have been quite crucial to Alejo's game plan, which will allow this Mian Chao to remain on the field. This is one of those very awkward circumstances when you're Zhang Yi facing down a Calyrex Shadow Rider because, uh, of course, Grassy Glide is still an option and should take down Calyrex from here. But yeah. if that Grassy Terrain were to run out, if he's able to stall that, uh, that, that field condition, the terrain away, all of a sudden, you're looking at Pokemon that are at very, very low HP values that mm -hmm. can easily be taken down by Astral Barrage that are just going to make that Calyrex stronger. So this yep. game very much comes down to that Calyrex. Can the Calyrex be positioned in a way that it's able to get those moves off? And can it be positioned in a way that it's not going to go down to a Grassy Glide? Well, yeah, exactly that, because you want it to be a Wrecking Ball. That is the role of Calyrex. It just it goes in there and it tries to pick up KOs as quick as possible so it can stack all of those boosts up. And it essentially runs away with the game. So the four versus three right now, Zengji versus Alejo's uh, Pokemon. And uh, it's quite of an interesting position here. Uh, Mian Chao, Calyrex. Mian Chao, of course, taking so much damage, but Calyrex needs to try to get rid of this grass terrain priority grassy glide from this Rillaboom and try to uh, circumvent itself around it so it does not get threatened. Honestly, Costa, I loved the play that Zheng Yi was going for initially before he cancelled. Mm -hmm. uh, switching in that Whimsicott 
and going for the Grassy Glide on the Calyrex essentially guarantees you either the Calyrex will go down to Grassy Glide mm. or it's going to click Protect and you can Encore Protect again. But unfortunately yeah. for Zheng Yi, cancels that. We'll see how that ends up uh, looking for the rest of this game. The Wide Guard comes out. I uh, It's an interesting turn. Not really what I expected out of either player here. But the, uh, the the double protect or the double into the Calyrex are both going to be protected here. And that's going to help out stalling just one more turn of this grassy terrain. The Mian Xiao, of course, surviving as well, is going to be very thankful that one of those moves wasn't targeted into it. Well, um, I think that may have been a water spout there, only because I saw the interaction of that Mian Chao having the guarding shield, the visual one there, so that may have been an indication of oh, that yeah, water right. spout. Um, as, of course, it, uh, very interesting play, like we were talking about, Stefan. So, Alejo going for the protect and the wide guard, something you don't commonly see, but in that scenario, made a lot of sense. It gave that longevity to the Mian Chao still being on the field and trying to waste that additional turn of the grass terrain. This is a, a very, I mean, it's very interesting that he clicked Water Spout, right? I, I don't mm. know if that would have picked off the Calyrex, even if it hit, but uh, I guess covering there for a Protect Close Combat or something oh. like that. The double Protect oh. comes in for Alejo, and I believe this might be the last turn of Grassy oh. Terrain. Oh my lord, you love and hate to see it, dependent on perspective, as the double Protect Double Wide Guard is able to come out right now. Of course, Wide Guard still uh, works successively in a row. There's no problem there, but it just absolutely covered uh, Alejo's position so well there to the point where you're able to get a bit more HP recovery whilst outlasting the Grass Terrain turn. Amazing uh, play. I say, of course, it's based on a lot of us uh, in this scenario, but the fact that Alejo knew that is a way that they want to try to get out and they could guarantee that they have have momentum just a lot of respect to alejo's play there it's not based on luck costa it's based on how hard you wish it into reality oh there we so, go uh, alejo with the, the the hard skills of uh of wishing very very hard but it paid <laughs> off this time and you know as you were saying i mean it's you have to identify your win condition and uh, really that was the win condition for alejo sometimes mm -hmm. you just need the double protect and sometimes rng decides to go your way so we're in the mm -hmm. same kind of position now where it's like okay it's four pokemon for zheng yi against in this case three for alejo but i really don't like zheng yi's position anymore no, because all the momentum's on Alejo's side as they're going to be switching the Mian Chao out now for the Whimsicott in case the Whimsicott on Zheng Ji's side decides to turn its head around the corner as it does to try to counteract the Tailwinds as the Astral Barrage will be coming up from the Calyrex Shadow Rider and just picking up KOs left, right, and center. But of course, I do respect that play from Zheng Ji's side uh, as they will be able to once again bring the grass terrain on the field and start threatening where they can maybe in an interaction of ice shard combination priority with grassy glide and hoping that the calyrex doesn't go for any mischievous protects again yeah this is one of the this is an interesting situation here because this is where if alejo had redirect the game is super over but the tailwind that could come out of that whimsicott isn't going to be relevant because both mm -hmm. of these pokemon are just going to be clicking the priority button yep. so We'll see exactly what happens here. That Calyrex is, uh, it's regained a lot of its HP, uh, but even to that a Miracle Seed, I feel like that Rillaboom should be able to pick it off pretty easily with a Grassy Glide. And of course you have the Ice Shard into the Whimsicott. And if the Mian Shao switches back in, well, the Mian Shao is gonna go down to that as well. So mm. either way, this is a still a bit of a stressful situation for Alejo. Yeah, because Zenji does have access to that double priority um, right now. It kind of does ignore the whole speed interaction there, as of course it is that heightened mm. uh, priority stage. So a very well played from Zenji, recognizing it. They still have the focus sash on the Mamoswine, but like you mentioned, I think it's just going to come down to which Pokemon Alejo decides to either protect or not protect in anticipation of Zenji's um, targeting this scenario. Yeah, this is a bit of an interesting call here. Uh, we do see the Protect coming in. The Fake Out's going into the Whimsicott, which should take it down. Mm. And I guess this is now where we start to wonder a little bit. Um, does the Mian Xiao have Feint to maybe get break the Sash and get through a Protect on the oh, Mamoswine oh. side? Uh, or just Fake Out the, uh, the Rillaboom, that works too. Fake Out the Rillaboom and try to drop a, an Astral Barrage. Because one of the concerns for Zheng Yi is that 
uh, Ice Shard is not going to KO from that range, especially not without a yep. Life Orb. Yeah. Yeah, and I think uh, it's perfectly, like you said, Stefan, I really like your comment because it, it is all about mind games. We have not had a reveal of the fourth final move from this Mian Shao. It could definitely be faint if it does carry it. We have seen close combat, fake out, and that wide guard. So um, if you have to go and, uh, you know, like reveal that move, this is the moment to do it if you're a Leho. If you anticipate that Mammoth Swine going for that protect, as we had seen revealed in game two. So get ready, ladies and gents. Strap your seats. <laughs> this is going to be a very tough 50 50 call right now between these trainers to get the final decider on who wins this match. Mian Xiao is going to opt for the fake out. That's going to oh. bring the focus dash. So the question now is does the grassy glide KO? Oh. And it will, which should bring the game to a close, I believe. I think that's the last Pokemon now that Mian Xiao. What does Mian Xiao do here? It turns out that Zheng Yi's Mamoswine is able to just be the fate that it needs to, takes that fake out, and that's gonna be it for the Calyrex Shadow Rider. So Mian Xiao versus the world here, I don't really see a win condition, Costa. No, I don't think you could see it even if you squinted your eyes in this scenario, only because of the fact that uh, this Mian Xiao cannot 2v1 against both a Mamoswine and a Rillaboom in that grassy terrain. It will uh, essentially concede right now to that Ice Shard, and your winner of our first streamed match is going to be uh, Zhuan Zhengji of China in a very heated match between these two great trainers because I've absolutely loved the display of strategy, both adaptability that they've been able to show as they were able to force it into that very crucial game three. That was such a great set to start things off. Of course, we talked a little bit about the groups and the standings before this game. That means that China has advanced to the top 16. So a big congratulations to the Chinese team uh, Argentina still in it. They did get a win in week number one, so they'll be facing Canada, facing off for that second place spot next week. It's going to be really, really interesting to see who comes out on top there, but uh, the adventure is not over yet for either team. Of course, China knows that they're in for at least another two weeks, and uh, that's going to be very, very interesting, especially for us uh, if, if, they, uh, if, if we get second in our group, which isn't... We're doing pretty good for first, but if we do end up second, we might end up playing the Chinese. And if we win the group, we might end up playing the Argentinians. So mm -hmm. I'm excited because if that was the quality of match we saw between those two teams, I can't wait to see what our guys can do against whoever we end up facing. Well, exactly that. So, of course, very fiery set, like you mentioned, Stefan. Amazing things. Huge props and congrats to China already uh, going ahead and uh, clinching that top 16 spot uh, to go into the final stage of this World Cup. Uh, VGC, hosted by Victory Road, sponsored by Adalto. That is all from us, you lovely people. We will catch you in a very short uh, bit after our small break, and we'll be right back for our second feature match, which is going to be between Ireland versus Malaysia. Don't go anywhere. We'll catch you.